Fingerprints are one of the most commonly used forensic evidence all over the world and can be recovered in multiple ways according to the surface they're on. Some approaches are more traditional and some are more dependent on modern technology. If someone has left prints behind, there's probably a way to find them. Every day we touch things such as a coffee cup, a car door, or a computer keyboard. Each time we do, it's likely that we leave behind our fingerprints, which is like our unique signature. As no two people have the exact same fingerprints. Even identical twins with virtually indistinguishable DNA have different fingerprints. This uniqueness allows fingerprints to be used in all sorts of ways, including for background checks, biometric security, mass disaster identification, and in criminal situations. Fingerprint analysis has been used to identify suspects and solve crimes for more than 100 years. It remains an extremely valuable tool for law enforcement. One of the most important uses for fingerprints is to help investigators link one crime scene to another involving the same person. Latent prints are not readily visible to the naked eye. As a result, these invisible prints must be developed in some way to increase their visibility and contrast. One of the most common methods for developing and collecting latent fingerprints is by dusting a smooth or non-porous surface with fingerprint powder. If any prints appear, they are photographed and then lifted from the surface with clear adhesive tape. The lifting tape is then placed on a latent lift card to preserve the print. It's not as simple as getting out a bristly brush with powder and sweeping it across any wine glass or bureau. There's a method to developing and recovering fingerprints. Fingers are coated with perspiration. Fingerprints often leave residues of oil in the shape of the friction ridge, creating latent prints on everything you touch. That's the stuff that powders pick up. The friction ridge skin itself does not secrete oils, and some fingerprints will only leave residues of amino acids and other compounds, which the powder does not adhere to well. Dusting involves using a camel hair or fiberglass brush and fine powders. Magnetic powders are also used, where a fine magnetic powder is held by a magnetic applicator, which may then be gently moved across the fingerprint. This often protects the print better because there are no bristles touching the surface. The movement you make with your wrist depends largely on the surface, the tool, and the powder you're utilizing for the task. The process of dusting for fingerprints involves various methods and tends to get the particles of the powder to adhere to the residues left by the friction ridge skin of the fingers, palms, or feet. Fingerprint powders have many formulations and the appropriate powder must be used on the appropriate surface. For example, dark colored powders will show fingerprints far better on a light surface. The action of such brushes is mostly from the side, not the tip. Contact releases the powder held by capillary action. A common mistake is to use too much powder. Only a very small amount is needed, especially if the brush has been used before. Excess powder will make it a lot messier, and it's easier to add more powder than it is to remove it from the brush. Apply the powder to the bottom sides of the brush by lightly spinning it against the inside of the lid. Once some powder is on the brush, lightly spin it with two fingers so the sides of the brush go over the print. When the powder is brushed onto the surface, it works by mechanically adhering to the oil and moisture components of the latent print. When the powder particles adhere to the grease or moisture forming the latent prints, it causes them to become visible. The developed latent print should be observable and can be photographed, lifted, and examined. A piece of clear tape can be used to lift the print.
It may take some practice to get a hang of this technique. Also try to experiment and see what works best for you. Fingerprints are the most incriminating types of evidence in criminal cases because it's one of the most reliable forms of identification. No two people have the same fingerprint, making it a truly fundamental tool for accurate identification of criminals. Only when fingerprints can't be traced back to a person with a criminal history do they have less power in an investigation. If you enjoyed the video, like, share, and subscribe.